Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, I want to say good afternoon to those of you joining me here on the East Coast. And of course, we'll say good morning to those of you who are joining us on the Central Time Zones, Mountain Time Zones, or Pacific Time Zones. And I also want to say good evening for those of you who might be joining us from across the pond in parts of UK or parts of Europe. Welcome to today's presentation. I want to talk about can a trade really be bulletproof? We're going to talk about taking the fear out of our trading and, of course, stacking the market odds in our favor as well. Now, many of you may be familiar with the concepts of radioactive trading. Okay, what we're going to look to do in a radioactive position is we want to open a combination of a stock and put together, which originally guarantees we can't lose more than 4 to 6% on any position. Once we have that structure, we look to apply different adjustments to the position that we've tested over time and, of course, evaluated and worked with other examples. But there's 12 different income methods we use to reduce that on initial risk, generate income against the position, and get to a point where we've canceled all of the risk, which is what we call bulletproofing. Of course, it is a standard married put setup, but we do it in a unique way that takes advantage of the three core principles of any options trade. We start off with our initial limited risk position. By making adjustments, we're going to lower that gap and lower the downside risk on our position, while potentially in most of the time still leaving our upside open. And then we get to a point where we have a guaranteed profit to the downside on the position. but still have the potential, in most cases, for unlimited upside gain. Now that's the goal. And we're going to show you today how you can do that, whether you started with a limited risk position, or you just own stocks that are up in price, or if you have a position that has a gain in it, what you might be able to do as well. Now, the radioactive trading techniques were originally developed by Kurt Frankenberg about 15 years ago. Back at around 2000, 2001, he spent a couple thousand dollars to take a weekend course, as many of you might have done as well, to learn how to trade covered calls, spread positions as well. It was a little two-day course, about $3,000 or so, and then he paid about $2,500 for some stock software that would show you if stocks moved up or down with little red and green arrows and so forth. Well, he set out on his own, and after a few successes, Following his guru's advice, he essentially, doing covered calls, lost 90% of what he had set aside in his savings with the covered call strategy. We know the money didn't disappear. It still existed in the market, but he wanted to look for a better way to trade long term. So the limited risk structure that we use at Radioactive Trading focuses on that floor first, limiting the risk first and then worrying about generating income at a later date. Well, why limit risk first? Well, the obvious, to avoid the unexpected and ensure our investments. In any strategy, whether you're trading high probability spread positions, credit spreads or debit spreads, maybe you're doing iron condors as well, you're going to have strings of winners and losers. Even in the covered call strategy, which is probably the most common and the most popular strategy, that's used by investors. What you see over time, especially with limited spread trades, is that the losers start to outpace the gains you had on the winners. And what does that mean? You can have a 75 or even 80% success rate with spread positions and still see your portfolio losing money because of the structure of the trade itself and the losses will quickly outpace the gains. And you're going to have, you might be able to show me three to four months of your last portfolio where 95 to maybe even 100% of your bull put credit spreads expired worthless and you made the full profit you expected. Or you had a string of 20 covered calls that all had the maximum return if assigned. Where are you going to be two or three months from now? What if you have a string of three losers in a row in a covered call position? You could easily wipe out the past 10 or 12 previous gains. With bold put credit spreads, you might have five losses in a row. That might wipe out 10 or 15, maybe 20 or 25 
of the previous wins on your spread positions. Can I control how much return I'm going to make on a covered call or a credit spread? Well, I have a profit and loss chart that shows me my maximum return if things work out the way I expect. But I can't control that I'm going to have that gain. I know what I'm looking for. I know what I'm hoping I could get. But I can't control if I'm going to win on that position or not. I can do adjustments. I can manage the positions. I can have trigger alerts and trailing stops. But in unexpected events, I can still take a loss even with a stop order in place. Can you control how many winners you're going to have in the market? Well, even if I'm looking for credit spreads that have an 80% probability of success, I still might only be right 70 or 75% of the time. And if I'm looking at positions that have an 80% probability on a spread trade, I actually need to be right about 85% of the time or more to make a consistent profit. So I can't control what the market's going to do. We can't control the unexpected, of course. The only thing I can control in the market is a guaranteed floor on the position, which guarantees how much I'm willing to risk on any trade as an insurance policy with a proper limited risk structure. And what's so special about limiting risk? Well, look what happened in the tech market a few days ago. Out of nowhere, we saw a two-day drop on the NASDAQ. I pulled back about 200 points. Now, it was at 58.85 or so, and it pulled down to about 5,700, about 185, 190 points. That's only a 3% decline. But certain stocks, such as NVIDIA, during that two-day time period of Thursday and Friday and into Monday as well, NVIDIA went from 160 to 148. Not that bad. It's only a 12-point drop, but it's a 7.5% loss on the position from where you might have even had a gain. Apple, of course, fell from 155 to 145. It's a loss of 6.5%. But in general, if you're just selling covered calls, the at-the-money covered call on Apple, even for a two-week out trade, is only around 1%. That means you need six cycles of covered calls without getting assigned at a lower strike in order to get back to break even. Of course, there were other stocks, not even in the tech sector, that pulled back as well. Now, Everyone likes to talk about Apple, of course, and this really, what we're going to show now, really applies to any stock in the situation that you might be in. But everyone likes to play Apple, whether you're buying calls against it. Maybe you're doing calendar spreads, which have a similar leverage risk-reward profile to a credit spread or a debit spread as well. You just have more time on your side. Or you're doing it as a covered call because it does offer weekly options with maybe a 0.8 or a 0.7% yield every five to seven days of trading. But here we go from one month. We hit a high of 155.47 back on May 16th. And then, of course, we saw a little pullback. Happy St. Patrick's Day, of course. Uh, right around May 17th, the stock pulled down to 150.25. Now, you might have seen this as a buy opportunity. And over time, in less than 20 days, you were justified by an increase in the stock price. And you probably maybe had more bullish expectations of the stock maybe reaching 160, 165. Maybe your three or four month goal was to see the stock hit to 200. But the unexpected happened. And within two days, Apple's now down to 145. All right? So we see a buy opportunity here at 150.25. We see a pullback, fall of earnings. We wanted it, the stock in. We feel that this is an overreaction, but it's a good time to buy. How would I have opened Apple on March 17th as a radioactive trade? Well, the structure I would have used is we could have gotten the stock for 150.25. And at the same time, I would have bought an October 155 put for $11. Now, my total invested into the position is 161.25, but remember what the purchase of the put does. That purchase of the put guarantees that I can force someone to buy my shares of stock at 155 at any time between now and October expiration. I do have 161.25 invested, but the worst case scenario is that I'm going to get 155 back. So the most I can ever lose is $6.25 or only 3.9% of what I invested into the position. But 
course, we want to talk about the structure. Now, this is taken today. This profit and loss chart is shown to you today with the stock trading around 145.60 or so. Now, I have a limited risk of 3.9%. That is the worst case scenario on the position. I've guaranteed that. The stock could have fallen to 110. I can still get out at 155. It's not like a stop order where if I had placed a stop and Apple gaps down, let's say, when we bought the stock at 150, I'm sorry, let's say we put a stop at 145, which it did drop below that. But if I put a stop at 145, the stock dropped 20% overnight for an unexpected event, is trading at 130. If you have a stop order, you don't get closed at 145. That stop order is essentially just a market order where you told your broker that if the stock's anywhere below 145, to sell to close the stock at what the market's offering, or 130. Okay, so you take that 20 point loss there, I'm sorry, it would have been 120, uh, but you take the 30 point loss, even though you had a stop order set at 145. Okay, so you're down about 20% on the position. We leave the upside open. So if Apple does the opposite, of course, and moves up, we're going to give some back because of the purchase of the put, but we're still going to expect to make 50 to 60% of the growth in the stock, even with the put in place. I paid $11 for that put, but remember, my risk is only 3.9%. I'm not down 3.9% when I open the position. I could immediately turn around and sell to close that 155 put for 1090, 1095, just the bid-ask spread, and sell to close the stock at the per near the purchase price of 150.25. All I'm risking when I open the position, or all I'm losing when I open the position initially, is the bid-ask spread of the put option. That loss of 3.9% is only likely to occur if three things happen. I hold the position all the way to October expiration and I make no adjustments. So over that five or six month period, I don't maneuver the put, I don't sell any premium, I don't accept any dividends, and the stock had to be trading below 155. That's really the only time we're going to lose 3.9% of this position. Okay, so we're not behind the eight ball. We're not down $11 when we initially opened the position, our purchase price for the put. The max risk, because some of that, remember, when the stock was at 150.25, some of that put option was intrinsic value. The 625 was the time premium. So we're not down behind the eight ball. The put doesn't go to zero when we open the position. When we saw the chart and Apple moved up to 155, so it was a gain of 537, the October put, so on June 7th, was still worth 790, or a loss of 310. So we did lose value on the put, but we gained more on the stock. We'll talk about that a little bit later as well. So why buy farther out in time? And why buy in the money? Well, the answer is you get what you pay for. Many of you who have purchased options before know that if you're taking a gamble, maybe on an event coming up, something in the news, an earnings event, you might buy a cheap five-day out, 10-day out call or put option based on your direction or a straddle or a strangle if you're playing earnings for a cheap price. But you get what you pay for when you buy cheap insurance on an underlying security that you want to protect. On May 17th, I could have bought the stock at 150.25, and I could have bought the June 145 put, 16 June, standard expiration on Friday, for about $1.75. Okay? But the risk was $700, or 4.6%, more risk than what we had with the October put. Why? because the insurance doesn't kick in until the stock drops to 145. That's five points and 25 cents below where we purchased the stock. So we'd have that loss of 525 plus the $1.75 we paid on the put. So it's a higher risk for only a month worth of insurance. Whereas I can have five to six months of insurance and have a lower controlled risk on the position. Also buying further out in time, we avoid 
rapid time decay on the option. We have a lower theta. Okay? When the stock hits 155.37, as we already showed on June 7th, the October put, our 155 put, which is now at the money, was still worth 790. But remember, the time value when I purchased that put was 625, the true risk. The time value actually swelled. The extrinsic value swelled even though we're a month into a trade because our put went from slightly in the money to at the money. It's just one of the three core principles. We're not going to go into it today. So we actually pay less time premium, the true risk on the position, compared to an at the money option. And we have a lower risk compared to buying the shorter term only one month out position, which is set to expire while we're still holding an October put to cross through one or two more earnings events with a lower risk in place. All right? So what is possible? Well, of course, I opened that structure. We saw it before. If the stock went up to $200 per share, went up about $49.75 from our purchase price, in the married put structure, I'd still have a gain of 24%, $38.80. I might lose the put value, but I didn't cap the upside as I would have with a covered call or another structured trade if the stock gapped up in price. And if the stock went to zero, of course, we'd only lose 625. Now, that's not realistic. But as the stock fluctuates, we're going to be able to make adjustments on that properly limited risk structure to maybe lower the risk, generate income, and lower the risk. We can generate income and leave the upside open, and we can maybe even profit in either direction with one of our income methods as well, whether the stock swings up or the stock swings down, keeping that risk controlled to a low percentage. All right. So what is important about limiting risk? Well, it's stacking the market odds in your favor. I talk to any investor that calls us up here at Power Options or Radioactive Trading. And why are they calling us? Well, they maybe want help because they've been trading covered calls. Maybe they've been trading credit spreads. Why are they interested in looking at limiting risk now? Because they maybe remember some of their gains. If you bought a long call and the stock gapped up 20 or 25 percent, you might have seen 100 percent, 120, maybe even a 200 percent gain on your investment. You're going to remember that. But you're also going to remember that one that just did the opposite of what you wanted in any trade that you were in, where maybe you took a 15, a 20, maybe even a 30% loss on the position. But if you can control that risk to begin with, or lock in the gains to have no risk on a position, rather than using a fickle stop order, which can be violated, that's stacking the market odds in your favor, and that's the great thing about bulletproofing. And it can be done in multiple ways. If you have a stock that you're holding, whether you're just holding stock right now or it's part of a covered call structure, maybe you've got to sign some stock by selling a naked put. Now you have a lower cost basis on the position. But you're worried about a correction. You may be able to bulletproof the position right now. If you had just bought a stock, you could still limit the risk now and potentially bulletproof your trade in one or two adjustments. Or if you started off with a controlled limited risk position to begin with and you see the stock move up, there are multiple ways that you could potentially cancel all the risk on your position. All right, let's go back to Apple for a moment. We saw the move here, a high of 155.47 back on the 16th of May. The next day, the stock gaps down to 150.25. It was earnings. But you might have thought it was an overreaction. Or, hey, if this is just a stock that you had a target for, whether it's $50.25, and you're bullish over the next 20 to 30 days or so, or more, well, you might have hit your target price. Okay? So we see a buy opportunity here on the 17th of May. Within the next 20 days, of course, we see the stock go up to about 155 again, hit that mark during the end of the day trading, and then we have this collapse. But let's ignore the collapse for the moment. What could we have done on May 17th if we realized this was a buying opportunity on the position? All right. So let's say we just bought shares of Apple at 150.25 after that little pullback. On June 7th, about 20 days into the trade, 
that's where we saw the second peak at 155.37. So we have a gain of $5.12, okay, small return on the position, about 4.5%, 4.3%. Okay. How could we structure the trade at that point? Remember, our stock's trading at 155.37. I own the shares of stock at a lower price. We could have then bought, on June 7th, the September 160 put for 905. Why September? Again, we want to go out further in time, so we have less time decay against us. Although we're paying a higher premium, both intrinsic in this case and time value, that theta, that time value decay is going to be very slow over the next four to five months. But see here, now my total invested is only 159.30. I had the stock at 150.25. I'm adding 905 into the position. So now I have a new cost basis, a new total investment in the structure of 159.30. But I bought a 160 put. It means that any time between now and September expiration, we're guaranteed. We have the right, not the obligation, we have the right to force someone to buy our shares of stock at 160 and we only have a cost basis of 159.30. So that means our new maximum risk is negative 70 cents or negative 0.4% and the negative at risk means that we're bulletproof on the position. Here's the profit and loss if we had purchased the September 160 put for 905 making our total investment 159, 70. No matter what happens with the stock, we're guaranteed a profit of 70 cents. But did I limit the upside? Absolutely not. We still have the potential if the stock moves up again after this pullback. If it goes back in the next 10 or 15 days back to 155, maybe goes to 158 or 160, we still have an unlimited upside profit potential on the position. Of course, we still have the ability to do other adjustments as well, where we could generate income and increase our bulletproof status on the position. We could even shorten the time on our insurance and close that gap even further to have more of a guaranteed profit to the downside without taking off the upside gain. Okay? You mentioned earlier there are 12 different income methods. Why are there 12? Because they work in different scenarios, whether the stock moved up after you just got in the position, whether the stock is stagnated, or whether the stock has fallen in price, or of course I mentioned, there's ways you can profit in both directions from where the stock moves. All right, so big deal. We had a gain in the stock of about 4% or so at 155.37. We locked in 0.4% return, big whoop. 70 cents on a $161 investment or $159.70 investment. All right. Well, what's the big deal? The big deal now is we see Apple at 145.93 and it dropped a little further. We just saw it at 145.60. So with just the stock itself right now, 20, 25 days in, we're looking at a loss of 2.9% on our investment. Say, so, okay, with a stock around 145, 2.9% is not that bad. Let me just sell a call now to make back that 432. Well, we have to go out to August now, about 45 days away or so, almost, almost 60 days away really. But we have to go out to August, and the 145 call is the only one that has a time value close to 2.9%. But that would just get me back to break even, even if I was assigned at 145. Well, I could sell weekly options against it and collect a dollar here, a dollar there, even going out to maybe the 21st of June, excuse me. But if the stock continues to fall, all I've done is hedge it by a dollar. I don't have any more protection if the tech sector is still weak, if we see more of a decline in the next 10 or 15 days. But that 0.4%, let's go back to the profit and loss chart for a moment. Just as we talked about before with the initial setup, was only a risk of 3.9%, and that occurs in the worst case scenario. If I hold the stock all the way to October expiration and made no adjustments, and it was below 155. Here, with the September 160, that 
gain, that guaranteed gain of 0.4% is actually the worst case scenario. So today, if I had purchased that September 160 put at 905 to guarantee a profit with a stock at 145.63 or 145.90 bouncing around in that range, about 20 minutes ago, the put was priced at 15.83. It didn't go to zero, remember, when I purchased it. That didn't disappear. It's a working asset that's still moving as the stock moves up and down. So we could sell to close the stock for 15.83, sell to close the stock for 145.93, and we'd have a liquidation value of 161.76. Remember, our cost basis was only 159.25. I'm sorry, yeah, 159.40 there. So we have a gain of 246 or 1.5%. It's not just that we're locking in 0.4%. It's that we've locked in 0.4%, and that's the absolute worst we could do on this trade at this time. Right now, we could still do better. With the stock down, five points or so from our purchase price, with it down 10 points from its most recent high in just a matter of two days, we're still long stock. And we still have a profit of 1.5% on the position by essentially calling the market top. Even though we don't know what the market top is, if the stock continued to move up, we'd still be in a better profitable position by ensuring that and guaranteeing because the put didn't go to zero as well. But of course, you know, we're talking about a structure here where we've locked in gains. We could still do other adjustments to that position. We could still sell calls against this limited risk structure and get a higher premium in, a higher guaranteed profit, and at the same time, increase our liquidation gains as we move forward. Okay, so you have a stock that's up in price. Even after the pullback, you may still have a lower cost basis on some of the tech stocks. NVIDIA was a big one we saw. Um, BABA actually had a large jump the other day. That's one that you could insure. Tesla has fallen as well, about 4%, 3.5%, I think. But if you still have a lower cost basis where the stock is trading on any stock, you'll be able to potentially find a proper structure to bulletproof the position, still be able to go forward through earnings, through any other unexpected change in a sector, in an industry, or any unexpected market event. But what about the structure from the beginning. Is that still going to be a beneficial trade now that Apple has moved up from our original purchase price? Well, let's take a look. On May 17th, we could have purchased the shares of Apple after the pullback, look like a buy opportunity at 150.25. At the same time, I could have purchased the October 155 put for $11. So remember, we had a cost basis of 161.25. This case guaranteed to get 155 back. So maximum risk is only 625 on the position. That 3.9%. So what happens when the stock moves up to 155.37? Did I lose on the put? Yeah, we already talked about that, right? We gained 512 on the stock, but the put, June 7th, our 155 put was priced at 790. So I lost 310. Still at a liquidation profit on the position, okay, about $2 or so. We could have closed it then for a gain. But as the stock moved up, my put did decline. Not denying that, but I made more on the stock than I lost on the put option. But what happens when the stock moved up? All of the puts declined in price. Not just the one I was in, but all of the puts declined in price. And now... I could take 790 off of my cost basis of 161.25 by selling to close the October 155 put. And I could buy the 160 put. It was priced at around, oh, sorry, folks. It was priced at around 10.05. Now, what am I doing here? I'm adding a debit to the position of 215. Why do I want to add to the total cost basis? Okay, so now instead of having a cost basis of 
I'm paying a debit of 215, which is going to take us up to 163.40. Why would I do that? Because I'm gaining a guaranteed exit of an extra five points. Essentially, I now have a guarantee to get out at 160. So in reality, I sort of generated 285 of income, more than I could get for the at the money covered call at the time, unless I went out almost 60 to 90 days out. Weeklies aren't going to offer me 285. Even the out of the monies, especially if I wanted more upside, wouldn't generate 285 unless I went maybe to August or maybe even to September at this point. Okay? So I added a debit in of 215 to get a guarantee of five points back. What would my new position look like? Is it going to be bulletproof? Not quite. We had a cost basis of 161.25. That included the $11 we paid for the put initially. We sold it for $7.90. We bought another put, of course, for about $10.05. So my cost basis goes up to $163.40. But now I'm guaranteed to get $160 back. So the risk is lowered to $340, almost cut in half to 2.1% from when we started at about 3.9. Okay, So here's the new structure of our trade. We bought stock originally at 150.25 and we would have purchased the 155 put for 11. It's already factored into that original cost basis of 161.25. Okay? Now I sell to close this at 790. Even though the stock moved up to 155, this put doesn't go to zero it's still four to five months out in time, I still have a lot of time value. By the way, what's interesting, remember when we open this position with a cost basis of 161.25, the risk was 625. That was the time value that we paid into the position. The other 475 that made up that $11 premium was of course intrinsic value. We were guaranteed to get it back. So when we open this in the money put, the time value, the extrinsic value was 625. 20 days in, the stock has moved up, the time value has actually increased. I'll say extrinsic value is a more accurate term, is increased from 625 to 790. We gained about $1.70 of extrinsic value, even though time has passed, because of what's one of the three core principles is the at the money bell curve, where any time on any option chain for any expiration, the at the money option will always have the highest time premium compared to the other options around it. Okay? So we actually gained extrinsic value. We're going to take that gain to lower the cost of a new higher strike put. So yes, our investment goes up to 163.40 per share. But now we're guaranteed to get 160 back. So the risk is only 2.1%. And again, that's the worst case scenario at October expiration if Apple is below 160. We left the upside open and we see here by the curved red line, which is the halfway point on August 17th, even if the stock's at 155 or 157, we're at break even, even though we're not near our cost basis of 163.40. Okay? Because the put won't go to zero. That's why we buy it further out in time instead of what we already showed of buying that cheaper out of the money put that was only one month out that would have cost us $175 but taken on a risk of $700 instead of $340. All right? But of course, we're not limited to what we could do. Once I've made this adjustment on the position, lowered my risk by half, I could still add another adjustment to the trade to bulletproof the position. On June 7, 2017, if we had rolled our put up from our original structure with the October 155 to the October 160, taking on a new risk of only 340 or 2.1%, I could have then sold to open the August 160 call at 355. Normally I won't go that far out in time, but this is just an illustration that we had the limited risk position in place. As the stock moved up, we didn't lose 100% of that put. It retained most of its value. In fact, it gained extrinsic value 
as we move forward and the stock moved up in price. We use that to get a higher strike put to guarantee a better payout, cut our risk in half, and now we can still do other adjustments against that structure. So now we take in that income of 355. So what does that mean? We've now bulletproofed the position. So we have a guaranteed profit of 15 cents, no matter what Apple does next. But does that mean that's the end case scenario? That we've got a position that was still up and we can only make 15 cents? No. The 15 cents maximum profit is the worst case scenario. If this call expires, we've taken our cost basis down to 15,985 with a guaranteed exit of 160 through October expiration. We'll cross close at least one, but we might cross even two more earnings events with no risk at all to us. Even if Apple fell 20% or 30%, you're not going to get that guarantee with just a covered call or even a stop order if it's an overnight or pre-market gap. We can still make a potential profit higher than our liquidation we had originally of 1.5% on the position of 3.3% if the stock happens to be trading right at 160 or even a little bit below or a little bit above on the near-term expiration of August. So even though what I showed you, income method number four, moving the put up in price to get a higher guaranteed payout, paying a debit of only maybe 50 or 60 percent of our increase in guaranteed price from 155 to 160, we only would have paid 215 or so, okay? Cut the risk in half and then we can still do other adjustments to lower that risk further, bulletproof the trade. Did we cap the upside? Of course, but you're going to cap the upside if you're just doing a covered call anyway. But we still have a reasonable profit because even if the stock's trading at 160 on August expiration, what's going to happen to this put? It's still going to be worth six, seven dollars of value because we still have two to three months to go to expiration. It's still going to retain some of its extrinsic value. So the liquidation is going to be higher. And of course, there are different adjustments we can use that as well. A comment came in is, why didn't you use a weekly option? I actually have a slide here, ironically. Uh, Jim says, why didn't you use a weekly option? I can use weekly options, okay? I could have looked at the 160 when we were at June 7th. I could have sold the June 16th 160 for, I think, about uh, 105. It was, either, it was 95, 90 to 110, I think, was the bid-ask spread on it at that time when the stock was at 155.37. It was either the June 16th or June 23rd I looked at a moment ago as well. Okay, so I could use weekly options, but I was using this as an illustration of how you'd bulletproof, how you could cancel all of that risk. And even when you cancel the risk, you're not saying that you're just settling for that bulletproof status of 0.4 or 0.5%. You still have the potential for further upside. Even if I sold the call, I still have growth to a 3% return. Of course, I could still make adjustments after that or even before August expiration depending on the performance of the stock going forward. Okay, You can use weekly options but you don't want to force it. The put you buy doesn't want to be a weekly option. We already illustrated that. You know, Buying that 145 uh, June 16th put for $1.75 would have taken on a higher risk and your theta would have been about four times as high because you only had about 12 days to expiration with a price of 175. So you're gonna lose almost 10 cents a day. A little bit more, about 14 cents per day on the position with a farther out option, slightly in the money, properly structured limited risk. We'll only lose maybe one or two cents per day because you won't see the rapid time to count the position until you get within that last 30 to 60 days or so of the position. Well, is it always better to sell premium Rather than do the debit I showed you, what was called income method number four, one of the four ways we manipulate the put option in a radioactive trade in our favor. I can actually shorten the time frame to bulletproof the position. I could do an adjustment where I increase the put and then added another put to create a synthetic straddle so that no matter what the stock did next, I could profit on the downside or profit on the upside and still be able to generate premium against the position. Rolling up the put, 
what we call income method number four, one of the 12 that we use at radioactive trading. I took advantage of at the money bell curve. When I bought it, it was in the money. As the stock moved up, it was now at the money, and we saw how the extrinsic value moved from $6.25 when we had purchased the insurance, and it was slightly in the money, to $7.90, even though 20, 22 days passed, and you'd expect to lose for the time value decay on that long put, but the at the money bell curve, that extrinsic value swelled, and it was priced at 790. So we had a gain of about $1.70, $1.65 on the risk, on the time value of the position. And of course, the red line, what I mean by the red line is the time value decay of an option, where in the last 30 to 60 days or so, really last 45 to 30 days, you see the rapid time decay. But if I'm out 90 or 120 or more in those first few months, you see a slower, slower decay and then it really kicks in. So buying that cheaper, just out of the money, two week out put option, the 145 for a dollar seventy five would have taken on a higher risk. Because you get what you pay for when you're talking insurance. Okay? So another way to adjust the position, I could have shortened the time frame. We're going to take a look at that in just a moment. And another advantage we can do is also use what's called riskless spread trades. I might show you an example of one of those as well in the context to generate income and still leave the upside open on the position. Okay, so let's let's take a break here from the slides. Let's go navigate over to Power Options very quickly. And I want to take a look here at two things. Okay, um, we're going to look at the Apple chain. We're going to have that in the background real quick from June 7th. We made our adjustment. But we're also going to take a look at the initial structure of our position, our before and after position as well. So let me take a look here. I want to show this clean. Okay, here I'm just looking at standard option chain and power options for Apple. But we're going to go back. We're going to go back to June 7th. I want to take a look at something real quick here. The stock, there it is at 155, 70, uh, 37, excuse me, I keep saying 73, but 37. But at the same time, I want to take a look at something, okay? Here's the position where if I had bought the stock originally at 150.25 and then sold, I'm sorry, bought the September 160 after the stock moved up for 905, we had that guaranteed risk of 0.4%. And what are some of the other things we could have done? Okay, well, I could have locked in a higher profit on the position. Something is pretty interesting here. Before buying this, let's go back. Let's clear that out. So here we are on June 7th. Bought stock at 150.25. I'm sorry, let me make sure of something. Good, okay. 150.25. Now let's go to August. I'm going to check August for a minute. Why? Let's verify this. And now we've got earnings coming up around August, so I'm going to go to the stock research tool here on the Power Options chain. Oh, we see the next earnings are actually before that. It's July 25th. Oh, okay, I think let me let me go to current. I apologize. Let me go to current. Up oh, 7:25, so it's going to be around 7:25, likely before August expiration. So instead of buying the September 160, I could have shortened the time frame. And let's say bought the August 160 at 820. Okay, how would that have looked? Let's take a look on our builder. Remember, we own the stock at 150.25. I'm going to go to August. And we would have bought the 160 then for 825. It was a bid of 815 and an ask of 830, so we'll just go 825 here. Okay, so instead of having a 0.4% guaranteed profit, now guaranteed almost 1% of guaranteed profit on the position through August expiration. I'll cross in earnings, no risk on the position. What else could we have done? We already showed selling the, uh, you know, maybe the August 160 call. But what if I wanted to leave the upside open because I'm playing it for earnings? Okay, well, let's take a look. Mentioned earlier, a riskless spread trade. 
there's two different riskless spread trades that we use at radioactive trading. One of them allows me to take advantage of generating income but leaving the upside open. And I could use weeklies. Let's say, okay, let's go back, I'm sorry, to June 7th when the stock was at 155.37. Let's take a look at the June 30 weeklies. It's about 21 days out. Let's go 14. Let's go to June 23rd. On our call side, you know, maybe I could have sold the 157.50 for $1.30 and maybe bought the 162 for 30 cents. So get another dollar of premium. Let's take a look at what that would be. Okay, so I know I could sell, as the 23rd, I'm sorry, the 157 and a half call, let's call it $1.32. All right, by itself, that's income method number one we talked about, just selling a call. Well, if I do this, though, well, still, it keeps a bulletproof status. We've got this here. But if I'm projecting, remember, we were at 155. So if I'm still thinking the stock could move up, Oh, no, sorry, June 23rd, my apologies. We would have bought the 160 at around 31, 32 cents. Okay, so what does that do? I still get a dollar worth of premium on the position, lower the cost basis, get a little bump here between 157.5 and 160, but we're profitable all the way through. This line that we're looking at here continues to have an unlimited upside. Now, why would I refer to this as a riskless spread? We're still guaranteed a profit of 1.6% in the worst case scenario, and we now have an infinite upside, whether we go through earnings, or we could do the August to get a better premium and leave the upside open. This is called income method number six. Why is it called a riskless spread trade? Because it didn't take on any extra risk to open this position, but by itself, what do I get if I sell a 23rd June 157 and a half call, buy a higher strike call for 32 cents? Well, that's a bear call spread. Where I'd have about a dollar worth of premium on a 250 risk. So if the stock moves up to 160 or higher, we take the full loss of 150. But in the proper structure of owning the stock. Why does that happen first off? Well, when you do a bear call spread, what you've done is entered into an obligation to potentially deliver shares of stock you don't own at 155. You do have the, I'm sorry, 157 and a half, I'm sorry, 157 and a half, but you do have the right to force someone to buy those shares of stock at 160. But if that happened, if the stock went up to 165 or gapped up to 162, you can buy shares of stock at 160, but you have to sell them at 157 and a half, so you take that loss of 250. You keep the dollar premium, so it's only a loss of 150. But if you own the stock, this obligation is covered. You don't need to put up margin. You don't have a two to one, three to one, or in some cases, you know bear call spreads with an 80% probability to have a nine or 10 to one risk reward ratio. This is a spread trade a vertical spread, a very popular strategy if you're bearish. But in radioactive trading, in the proper context, if we own the stock at 150.25, this is just a covered call, seven and a half points higher than where we bought the stock with an extra call added. And of course, we still have our September 160 put in place to ensure the downside when we only paid 905. Right? So, like I said, why would there be 12 income methods? Well, if I'm still bullish on the stock going forward, and I want to generate some premium here to help my position, but I think it still might go up, this solves the problem of a covered call. I still have infinite upside profit potential, still took in premium to lower my cost basis, I don't have the risk of a spread trade. And I'm still bulletproof to the downside. If the tech continues to turn, you're not risking any of your investment. You've guaranteed yourself a profit, okay? Maybe of only 0 0.5, 0 0.7, or 2%, but remember, that's the worst case scenario on a position. Once you've bulletproof, the worst you could do is the guaranteed profit. The put's not gonna go to zero. 
you're still going to have time remaining on it as well. well let's take a, one more look here. I'll talk about that original position. Let's build it from the beginning. Remember, on May 17th, had I bought stock after the pullback at 150.25, and I had purchased the October 155 put as a radioactive structure. We said 11 points. That's what it was at the time. We had that cost basis of 161.25 and a risk of 3.9% worst case scenario. So I started from the beginning. Rather than waiting for a gain to the stock, we started from the beginning with a limited risk in place. Then what did we do? As the stock moved up, we saw an increase in our extrinsic value. We were able to sell to close the 155 put when the stock on June 7th, so 155.37. We'll sell to close that for 790. And we saw the 160 put at the time was 10.05. So here we are, still out to October, only a risk of 2.1%. Let's go back to the option chain. Let's go to June 7th, and let's go to July instead of August even. And what could I have done there? Well, I could have done another dollar in premium by adding that riskless spread doing the bear call spread against the proper structure, could have sold the 160 call for about 187 and bought the 165 for about 82. Right? So 187 to 82, let's call it that. How would that help our position? I'm sorry. Okay, well let's take a look. Go to July. Seller 160 call at the time. When stock was at 155.73. At 1.87, and then we could buy the 165 for about 84 cents or so. Let's put 84 cents, why not? Oop, there we go. Sorry about that. So there's our bear call spread. Oh, let's take a look here. What have we got? Now, I'm not quite bulletproof, but we've lowered the cost basis down to 162.37. So max risk of only 1.5%. And in the next... 30 days or so, as we go to July expiration, remember, this part of the chart is going to continue to do this. It is a covered call, but I have an extra long call that's going to continue to gain as the stock moves up in price. So I took a bear spread, made a dollar on a five-point spread, which would usually be a four-to-one risk-reward ratio, but here there's no additional risk because it's in the proper structure of owning the stock doing a vertical spread with no risk. It's a riskless spread trade done in the proper context. And let's say it expires worthless and the cost basis drops down. Well, going into August, we might be able to generate another dollar, dollar twenty-five, with another bear spread and have only a $100 risk with an unlimited upside going through earnings on July 25th or the July 30th when they come out on Apple. Unlimited upside, guaranteed low risk on the position, still being able to generate other income to further enhance the position, lower your cost basis, and bulletproof the position potentially through any events going forward. We, the earnings is a known event. What about the unexpected? What if there's another 4 or 5 percent decline in the tech market going forward? What happens then? You still want to be holding Apple, which maybe you got at 150. It's currently at uh, close to real time here at 146.30. Okay, so it's not as bad. But even though I didn't know that 155 was the target, was the top, and it's not even the top, we don't know, right? But at 155, I had an opportunity to cut my risk in half if I was on a limited display. If you just own the stock, you had the opportunity to bulletproof the position going out to September. And even now with the stock down to 146, Remember we saw earlier that if I had bought that September put when the stock had moved up on June 7th, 155, sure, I guaranteed a profit of 0.4%. But remember we saw the liquidation value today was still a profit of 1.5% where you'd be down 4% on the stock position. Less now, it'd be about 3.8. But the gain on the married put, let's take a look where it would be right now. 
here's that structure, here's my position here in the Power Options portfolio. If we had bought it at 150.25 and on June 7th bought the September 160 for 905, the gain now is at 250, or 1.6%. The stock still down 2.6%, down 385. We had locked in a profit, not at 0.4. Remember, 0.4%, that was the worst case scenario at September expiration. Right now we have a gain, even with the stock down in price. We didn't know that was the top of the market, did we? Now, this illustration, you can say I'm cherry picking, but the idea behind it is I had an opportunity if I own the stock to bulletproof the position. And if the stock continued up to 164 or went up another, let's say, 385, okay, from where it was, even only went up to 162, I'd still have a profit on this married put. I didn't lose that value on the put option. It's still retaining most of its value. And it's now gone from slightly in the money to at the money. So we'd see a swell of intrinsic value. I could even go up to the 165 at that point. If Apple was at 162 right now, probably bulletproof the position and locked in a higher gain. That's the advantage of bulletproofing the position. And again, we showed you that even if you owned a stock that has moved up in price, okay, and you're holding a position with an unrealized gain, but you're uncertain in the market, that is the perfect time to bulletproof a position. To control the risk, the only thing we can control in the market as well. Okay, and at the same time, if I had opened it just as a married put, did I throw the money away to buy the insurance? Absolutely not. We already saw that in that scenario, the stock had moved up. I was able to sell the call, I'm sorry, sell my put for 790. I lost on the put, but I was able to buy a put at a higher strike price and only pay a debit of two to three dollars and increase my payout by five. So it's still a benefit there. Okay, and again, we talk about these different ones. I showed you three income methods today, actually. I showed you adjusting the put option, which we call income method number four. That bear call spread done in the proper context where it's a no-risk spread, it's called income method number six. We also showed just selling a call, which is income method number one. It's the first thing people think of, but there are right ways and wrong ways to do them. You can actually hurt yourself if you got into a married put structure today and sold the wrong call you'd actually increase your risk in the direction you thought the stock was going to go if done incorrectly. There are 12 different income methods that we teach off of this limited risk structure. And again, why 12? Well, think about it. If you're building a shed or a playhouse, are you just going to use a hammer and nails? No, you might need a drill. You might need to put some bolts in to the structure to make it more secure. You might want to use some screws. You've got to make sure it's level. You can kind of gauge that with a hammer by putting it on there, but really you're going to need a level. You might need a saw as well, okay? And then you might need a hammer and nails because you're going to need different tools to build a secure structure. And that's why there's 12 income methods because some of them that we saw today, if I'm in a position, I've controlled my risk, the only thing I can control by buying the put initially, and as the stock moves up, there are some adjustments that work best when the stock moves up. If I had bought Apple at 150.25 on May 17th and I bought the 155 put and the stock stayed right at 150 between now and then and I had a sentiment that the stock was going to remain the same, there are adjustments I can do if I feel the stock has now gone neutral to still generate income, get into a lower cost basis on the position and at the same time not take on any extra risk. And what if my stock as it did here? fell to 146. Well, if I think the stock's going to recover, now the stock has fallen, I can make adjustments. If I think the stock's still going to continue down, there are other income methods I could use to profit on the downside and on the upside. The market's dynamic. And as you know, any position you get into, whether you just bought a call on a stock, whether you did a bear spread, whether you did an iron condor, you know there are essentially three outcomes going forward of any position that you did. The stock could move up, the stock could stay at the same price or close to it, and the stock could fall. Now there's realms of the spectrum inside each of those three scenarios. It could go up 20% or it could go up 2%. It could not move up more than 1% or not move down more than 1%. It could fall 30% or it could fall 2%. Okay? But in general, there's three different outcomes. So you want to have available to you, number one, 
proper limited risk structure, which puts the market odds in your favor, and ways to adjust that proper structure where the stock moves up as you expected, stays neutral, or moves down in price. And Alan asks a great question. Alan wants to know, does this work best for rising stocks? The married put structure, as we saw in the beginning, let's see, uh, let me go back to a profit and loss chart of one of the initial positions. Right, here's one of the adjustments, of course, Alan. Um, there we go. When we talked about this one, this was after adjusting the put option to the 160 strike. But yeah, what is the structure of this trade? It is bullish in nature. It is a bullish position. But remember what I said at the beginning of the webinar. In any trading strategy, even if you're setting up positions that have that 80% probability, you are going to have strings of winners and losers. Okay? So the 12 different income methods help us if we're wrong and the stock stagnates or if the stock falls. But yes, it is a bullish position. Okay? What if you wanted to use it on a neutral stock that pays a dividend? You could. And as the stock fluctuates 1% or 2% up in price during a uh, strong trend for maybe even the most neutral of uh, dividend-paying stocks, you could make an adjustment on the position to the upside. And if it falls down, you could do adjustment as well. Okay? And that leads me to the next thing is, uh, well, another couple of things also. But you could do that, Alan. But yeah, you do. It is a bullish structure to begin with. We usually look for stocks that have a little bit more movement. But I've had great success with this strategy on stocks, uh, dividend paying stocks uh, over the years since I've been trading about eight years now with about 50 to 60 percent of my trading capital. I'm trading options for 15 years. Uh, when I met Kurt, I devoted maybe 20, 15 percent of my portfolio to this new technique that I was introduced to. And over time, I found it outperformed other strategies that I've been trading long term because of the controlled risk. So now for the past seven, eight years, 50 to 60 percent of my allocating capital or my allocated trading capital is in these radioactive trades, okay? But Johnson & Johnson, Kraft, uh, Heinz, uh, Global was one. Those are a few positions that I've traded which pay a dividend, slower movers, but I had a double-digit gain over a five-month period on one, about an 11-month period on Johnson & Johnson. I think it was a 12.4% gain, even with the put in place and doing adjustments over time, okay? All right. And... I myself am wrong and disastrously wrong in some occasions. Back in February of uh, uh, February to August of 2015, I bought a stock called Iconics, ICON, sort of in the retail division. I got into the stock originally in February at $36 per share. By August, it was down to $12.25, fell 65.9%. I was long stock the entire time, but using the different income methods, I closed out in August with a stock down 65%, almost 66% really, for a gain of 4%. Had I been doing covered calls on that time, I would have reduced the loss by 18%, about 25 to 3% for a six-month period, but I still would have had a loss of 47.9% on the position. And with a radioactive setup, controlling risk and being able to adjust if the stock had stayed the same or if the stock fell, I was able to get a 4% gain. That doesn't sound like a lot for a six-month position. But in the first 20 days of that married put on icon, if I'd open as a covered call, that's when the stock unexpectedly fell 25% of its value. So if I'd opened as a covered call, it would have been down to begin with 22%. Making 2.5%, 3% per month, that puts me at eight months to get back to break even. Five months after that, I was at a gain of 4% using a properly structured trade. Now, is every radioactive trading position I open going to be bulletproof? No. About a third of my positions over the course of a 12-month period, about a third, sometimes half, get to bulletproof. Others, I just close out if I've hit my mark, what I want for my trading plan. Okay? And not every position is going to be profitable. But with a proper structure in place, again, you can guarantee you can't lose more than 4 to 6% on any one position. Think about your trading last year or even in the last two years, if every loss you'd taken had been to only 5% of what you invested in it, rather than the losses you took, would you have done better over the last two years by controlling the one thing you can control in the market? And that's limiting the risk now. All right, so what can you do now? Well, a little bit ago, we showed some of the power options tools in the profit and loss chart, but what you can do is go to PowerOp.com. 
If you haven't done so already, when you're at PowerUp.com, just put in your name and email address, you'll get a 14-day free trial. Then, under the Married Put tab, or in our Signature Tools section, you'll see the Insurance Tool. What that allows you to do is put in a stock that you have that's maybe up in price from where you bought it. You have an unrealized gain, still might be exposed to risk. So simply put in your stock, put in your cost basis, and that tool will show you which puts are available to bulletproof the position so you can go forward now, maybe through the next earnings, maybe through whatever happens in the end of June, through July, and into August with a guaranteed profit. But that's not the limit. You still have unlimited upside, and your put's not going to go to zero when you first open the trade. That guaranteed profit is the worst case scenario. So imagine the potential of have a third or maybe even half of your trades of the last 15 months where they had no risk on the positions and were in bulletproof status. How would your portfolio look as opposed to what it does look now? In addition to that, you're going to receive an email later on when this archive webinar is posted, and we'll invite you to our discussion on Thursday at 12 noon. We want to talk about the trade selection, the proper limited or structure. Today we shared ideas that, yes, it is possible to bulletproof a trade, and it's easier than you think. And bulletproofing the trade doesn't mean that's the end of the story. You can still do other adjustments, and you still have more profit than just the locked-in gain. The locked-in gain is the worst-case scenario. Okay. But on Thursday at 12 noon, we're going to talk about trade selection and setting up the proper structure, and we're going to open a new radioactive trade for our Fusion subscribers. And what's that? Well, radioactivetrading.com. We also offer a subscription service for limited risk investors. And what they can do there is you have tools to find new trades that match our limited risk structure. You have the insurance tool there for you as well, but you can also follow along with my radioactive positions, uh, Ernie Zarenner, the president and founder of Power Options, his radioactive positions, and see the full track records for Kurt and other investors uh, that have traded this position that we have posted as well. So if you're serious about going forward and limiting risk, of course you can join me on Thursday, but you want to consider picking up the full work. The blueprint is the only place that details the initial structure. We're going to share some of that, of course, on Thursday but it also details how and how not to use each of the 12 different income methods and how to structure those different income methods to get you to a better point of bulletproofing your trades, still having more return on the positions as well, not just that bulletproofing is the end game. There's still more profit to be had. And of course, there's additional chapters on exiting, combining income methods that we even looked at today with that combination of four and six, that's there also. You can keep joining me for free webinars during the week. You can view some of our archive webinars as well, but you're not going to get all of the ins and outs through the webinars alone. I could have done that income method number four we showed when the stock moved up to cut the risk in half. I could have done that incorrectly and actually taken on a higher risk. I could have also done it incorrectly to where I have no expectancy of more profit than the bulletproof status. So there's a proper way to use each income method, and that's what's talked about in the blueprint. When to use them, how to use them, how to avoid misusing them, and of course, how to combine them together. Okay? Now, if you go to radioactivetrading.com slash radium, I'll send that to everyone in the chat window for those of you that are considering picking up the blueprint. But if you go to radioactivetrading.com slash I-R-I-D-I-U-M, Iridium, you'll be able to see the five special bonus offers that we offer with the blueprint right now. You'll be able to get a free month of power options, which is a $60 value. You'll be able to test out on your own time when you're ready, the first month of Fusion for only $10. So that's a heavy discount on your first month of Fusion. Uh, we'll also send you some quick start guides and some other information and one of the mastery series videos that Kurt put together, there's seven of them, but we'll send you one of them for free if you pick up the blueprint. In addition to that, the blueprint also comes with a money-back guarantee. If you pick up the blueprint, you decide you're not satisfied with it, you can send it back to us. We'll refund your purchase price, no questions asked. Also, later this month, we're going to have special webinars for blueprints and Fusion members only. Uh, so special members webinars, you have an archive there if you own the blueprint, where you'll be able to see some more 
in-depth information and some video examples of what we talk about in the blueprint and of course customer feedback and customer questions blueprint owner questions as well you'll have access to that full archive as well as invitations to our upcoming members only webinars uh, that we'll have on the um, in the end of June we'll have two uh, members only webinars possibly three members only webinars between now and the end of June as well and that's what you get if you pick up the blueprint not only the full structure to properly limit risk control the risk and how to get to bulletproof status you also get those five bonuses the money back guarantee access to our ongoing education and members only webinars all right so what next well feel free to review the archive webinar I'll send you all an email when today's webinar is posted you'll be able to access that archive at radioactivetrading.com if you're serious about limiting risk and stacking the market odds in your favor going forward now whether you still think the markets bullish adding a put option and controlling your risk doesn't stop there you can still take advantage of further bulletproof status and still be able to do other adjustments you're doing right now in the proper structure of a limited risk trade so pick up the blueprint no risk to you at all it comes with the money back guarantee if you have questions about today's presentation remember you can reach me at any time send me an email to support at radioactivetrading.com or you can call us during market hours at 302-992-7971